Hi, my name is Ken Baldwin, and I'm the Executive Director of the National Posture Institute. We just got back from the SCW conference in Atlanta, Georgia, where we performed a pre-con event, which was an eight-hour uh, eight pre-con, which included personal trainers, uh, athletic trainers, and physical therapists. And they attended the pre-con to learn how to become certified posture specialists, as well as to get continuing education credits from the NNTA, um, physical therapy associations from various states and also from personal training organizations. So in the video you're about to see the attendees practicing posture assessments and also learning about corrective exercises. So if you have more interest in learning about our workshops and our online education to become a certified posture specialist, please go to our website www.npionline.org. Thank you and enjoy the video of what I'm looking at from an anterior analysis. So I'm looking at, you know, is their chin level, you know, our ears level. Um, I talked about that triangle between the ear, shoulder, you know, and going back in towards the sternum area. So we got a little triangle action to see where the balance is in the upper trapezius. Next thing we're looking at is are the shoulder height. You know, are they level here? Usually somebody's gonna have one shoulder higher or lower than the other. Then from the shoulder, you're drawing your eye down to where their elbow alignment is and then from their elbow alignment down to their hand. They're all tied together. See, see some, yeah, they're, they're level and then you're feeling to see if, they're, um, if there's any um, extra, extra um, protrusion. Because when you're looking for, there could be like a uh, leg height difference and then also any type of rotation too. When I look at the shoulder, we want to understand like where the middle deltoid is and the anterior and posterior so there's balance in between all three units so I mean the way her shoulder is right now it's pretty good so most people they're gonna have that internal rotation so you have to kind of understand where yeah, if you just want to internally rotate just see where those fibers are gonna be lie they're gonna be coming forward like that there's drawings like people putting stuff on a shelf you know digging ditches I mean it's like all these things that you're you know vacuuming and you rate your ability to do that and then so let's say on a scale of like you know one to five and you can see these different activities. Oh, I see it advanced, so here's some drawings. These would be drawings that you'd see. So on a scale of one to five, let's say five's the best, and you've got a client that's 3.1, and then they indicated they have pain in their life, like in their lower back. And then when you look at some of these activities, like getting in and out of the car, you know, something like that, you know, those might be difficult tasks where you know, hand dexterity may not be a problem. So I think this is really important. I, I call this pre-resistance training. Why is it pre-resistance to do goniometry measurements? Because they don't have weights in their hand, but what do they have? They have their own body weight and they're fighting gravity. So, you know, somebody's got to be able to have strength to be able to lift their leg up to do that, right? Somebody has to be able to have some uh, range of motion when we do trunk, fle trunk flexion testing. Uh, trunk extension, they have to have some strength and flexibility and they also have to have some body awareness. Okay. Let's just go through the basics of the goniometer. So this is going to be the centering point. This is the arc in here. One arm is going to be called the stability arm. So it's going to be the one where you're holding on to. You know, you're going to take a nice hold. You know, and like, like the positioning, depending on what I'm measuring, I usually kind of hold it around the middle. And then the movement arm is the one that, you know, I kind of keep my in thumb and index finger. I kind of just use that as a guide so you get a feel for it after a while. And the thing is when you're holding on the stability arm and you're actually going, somebody's going through a movement pattern and you're measuring it, you want to make sure that your centering point, you know, and this are staying in the position in which you started at. This is incorrect here, this is correct, and then the range of motion she's lifting upwards, that's as high as she really needs to go. So I was just demonstrating it. She just needs to go up that high and then she goes back down to that point. And it doesn't look like much, but it's like, here we are, we're right here, just going straight up and she's going right back down to good posture. So she, when she goes back down, she's not going down where she's rounding out her body. So can you, can you tell the difference? So imagine doing 15 or 20 repetitions like that and you're holding 50, 80 pound dumbbells. Well, that's where kind of technically we want this shoulder we want the, when we talk about like four points and where the shoulder should be level, so if we just have her like, just, just by keeping it down that point, these muscles in the neck are going to be tightened and strained because now they're lower. Remember we talked about that. If they're down low, they're going to be tight. And then this area, the rotator cuff's not in the position to really train it properly that's going to help you prevent any injuries. So we want to make sure that her shoulder's up higher, okay, and that 
If we look from the side here, I'm just gonna turn you like that, okay? Okay, stop. See where the shoulder and the elbow are? See how they're forward? So we want that guy to be back a little bit more. Good, and then we're gonna bring your hip like that. So that's where, we, so if he, we had Dimitri kind of move that way, <laughs> and then we're gonna just pivot you like this. Okay, then just retract a little bit more. And then we're gonna bring that elbow back. So if you look down when you're training by yourself, use the mirror, you know, try to make that in a 90 degree angle. Okay, and now you're gonna, pel I'm gonna palpate the posterior deltoid. So you're gonna go back, so you're gonna come up to the side slow. Good, hold it there and then you come back in. And pause. So see how it just kind of shift forward? So after every repetition, we're gonna bring that guy, this back and you're gonna restart.